Hey, this is Eric over at Techno RV, and in this video, I want to give a comparison of our current PepWave lineup. Now, I'm a full-time RVer, and I've been running my business from the road for a long time. And over those years, I know what needs to, uh, what units are best for different RVers based on what their needs are. Some people are just you know, wanting to, you know, stream some video or stay connected with family through email, uh, surf a little internet, and some people are running full-blown businesses. One of these units will meet your needs regardless of what those needs are. And the, the reason that we brought this, these units down to just four is because PepWave has more units, but there's a lot of duplications with them and it just creates a lot of confusion. So we have curated these to avoid that confusion and just know that whatever your needs are, one of these will certainly cover that. So today we're gonna to talk about the uh, single modem Max BR1 Mini. This is a category uh, seven unit here. This unit here is the Max Transit Pro. This is a dual modem, so it has two modems in it, a Cat 7 and a Cat 12 modem. Uh, this is the Max BR1 Pro. Uh, this is the Cat 20 LTE model, and then this one is the Max uh, BR1 Pro 5G model. Uh, so you can get the prices for, obviously there's different price levels on these, and you can get the prices for all of these at uh, technorv.com if you want to hop over there and check that out. All right, let's talk about the uh, category levels here in these units and what that means as it relates to speeds. Uh, this is a category seven, this uh, Max BR1 Mini over here. It's a category seven modem. And when we talk about theoretical speeds, these are like laboratory condition speeds that these are capable of. That's not real world, but it does give you, uh, you know, the ability to see that these units can handle a lot. Typically, your limiting factor will be your cell plan or the cell tower even having the ability to give you the bandwidth that these units can handle. Uh, but it is good to know at least what their theoretical speeds are. Uh, and again, this uh, Cat 7 right here has a uh, the theoretical speed of 300 megabits per second download speed and 150 megabits per second upload speed. Uh, so very respectable on the CAT7 there. And uh, it being our lowest cost model, uh, for those that are just looking to surf some internet, maybe you know stream a little video, nothing, nothing too intense, uh, you know, this is gonna be a great model. If you're running a full-blown business, this probably isn't gonna be, be the model for you. Uh, the next one is the Max Transit Duo. So this is gonna have dual modems in it, uh, which means that it can take multiple cellular cards in different modems to where you can go back and forth between those very quickly. And uh, so the Category 7 side of this, the theoretical speed, is uh, 300 megabits per second download and 150 megabits per second upload. And the category uh, 12 side of this modem is 600 megabits per second on the download side and 150 megabits per second on the upload side. Uh, plenty of power uh, and more than enough for most. Uh, this is the uh, CAT20. Um, 4G LTE model right here, and its theoretical speeds are uh, two gigabits per second on the uh, on the download side, and 150 megabits per second on the upload side. This is the 5G model, and its theoretical speeds on the on the download side are four gigabits per second on the download and 700 on the upload. Again, theoretical speeds, but that just kind of gives you an idea here of kind of what we're dealing with. And again, your limiting fi factor is rarely ever going to be the pep wave, especially when you start getting up into these models uh, that you're not going to find a, a cell tower that's even going to provide that. But this does offer you some future proofing as technology uh, improves. These pep wave units will be prepared for that. 
Uh, let's talk real quick about something called carrier aggregation and basically that is just the ability for these units to connect to more than one cellular band at one time. So if you were only able to connect to one band uh, at, a, at a cellular band at a time, because a cell tower could you know, have many, many bands available, uh, but if you could only connect to one and that one was congested, you would have a bad experience. Uh, but if you could connect to multiple bands at the same time, then you would have a much better experience because while one might be congested, another might not be. So you're on the same cell tower, but because you have carrier aggregation, you're having a better, better experience than someone that does not have that. So basically when we talk about this, it's in relation to how many bands can these units connect to at one time. So on the uh, CAT7 uh, Mini down here, it can connect to uh, two bands at a time. On the uh, Duo model here, on the CAT7 side of this, it's, it's again two times. On the CAT12, it's three times carrier aggregation on the download and two times carrier aggregation on the upload. Uh, on your uh, 4G uh, CAT20 modem here, it can do five times carrier aggregation on the download, so that's five bands and three on the upload, and the 5G is also five down and three up. So that is, is carrier aggregation and kind of what it means and how it works and having the, that ability in these PEP wave units can improve your experience quite a bit. All of these units uh, cover all of the carriers, uh, including AT&T, Verizon, the old Sprint stuff, T-Mobile, even your Canadian carriers like Rogers and Bell and Telus, and it's gonna cover all of your updated uh, bands, uh, including T-Mobile's band 71. A lot of people uh, with T-Mobile with are concerned about, does it cover band 71? Every one of these units covers band 71. So all your carriers, um, you, you know, again, all of your bands that you would expect if you're interested in seeing like all of the bands specifically, you can go to technorv.com and go to the product pages on these and read through those individually. Uh, so uh, all of these units are capable of uh, dual band Wi-Fi AP and dual band Wi-Fi as WAN. Dual, the, the Wi-Fi AP is me connecting my device, like my smartphone, connecting that to this device. So my smartphone can connect in 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz, and these PEP waves can, ex can do that as well, right? So that's me connecting to this. The Wi-Fi is WAN as these units connect into the RV Park's Wi-Fi system. Uh, and it can also do that in dual band. So if a park you're at has 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, then these units will do that. I do want to talk about one small point that I need to bring up here is that your, your Duo and your, uh, Pro, your Pro 5G and your Cat 20, out of the box, they have the Wi-Fi as WAN. Nothing you need to do there. This, the BR1 Pro Mini has the capability to do it, but it's not fired up out of the box to be able to do it. So you'll have the option to purchase what's called a failover license. It's a one-time purchase. And once you purchase that, then it opens up the Wi-Fi as WAN and the, the, the Ethernet port that's the WAN on this unit as well. Uh, so if you don't buy the failover license, then on the CAT7, you actually don't have Wi-Fi as WAN or the, the Ethernet port uh, WAN either. Most people almost all buy the failover license whenever they get this unit right here. So all these other ones, it's out of the box, you get it. You don't have to buy a failover license. But uh, anyway, I wanted to explain that for you. Another thing as it relates to the uh, Wi-Fi is that the BR1 Mini uses Wi-Fi 5 technology and the uh, Pro and the two BR1 Pros uh, use Wi-Fi 6 technology. Um, all good, but Wi-Fi 6 is the newer Wi-Fi technology. It offers better range, uh, uh, faster ability for downloads and upload speeds. Uh, works a bit better in congested areas, and it's just a more efficient chipset. So Wi-Fi 6 from here down, and then uh, don't mean to pick on the, the BR1 Mini here because it is a great unit, but it is using the Wi-Fi 5 uh, technology. 
I know security is important for everyone uh, as you uh, transmit sensitive data and bring sensitive data in. And PepWave is known for its high levels of security. They do use VPN technology and from a high level, maybe more of a simplistic way to explain this is when you're transferring data with one of these PepWave devices, they break that uh, piece of data at, down into very small pieces. Uh, to where one individual piece would not show the whole picture of the data that is sent. Then those individual pieces are then coded with military grade encryption. And so, you know, it's, it's basically they have sort of refined the, the art of internet security with this uh, method. And I've been using a PepWave for many, many years, running my company from the road, transmitting sensitive data a lot and I have never had a concern uh, with the PepWave's ability to protect that information. Now, when you get one of these units from Techno RV, in the box, you're gonna get everything you need uh, to fire this unit up, right? So you're gonna get uh, all of your uh, antennas, you're going to get your uh, power supply, and all PepWaves have moved to the four pin Molex connection uh, instead of the barrel style that they used to use, so that's an improvement. And with any one of these units, when you get it from Techno RV, we're going to send you at no extra cost a, a power supply that is a cigarette lighter style plug for 12 volt to that four pin Molex uh, connection that comes on these PEP waves. So you'll have the AC power plug that comes with this. And when you get it from us, we're also going to send you that DC power supply to connect to a cigarette lighter style plug if you want to use uh, 12 volt. Um, so a lot of different uh, power options there when you get it um, from Techno RV. Uh, also, in addition, all of these units are using nano SIM cards. Uh, that is the smallest SIM card that you can get. And you have to provide your data plan with that SIM card uh, when you get the PEP wave. Now, Techno RV sells data plans and we're very proud of them because we went out and uh, negotiated deals directly with the carriers. A lot of times you'll see people that are working for third party uh, people and, and you know you can see, see and read all kinds of problems that, that may arise from that. And we made the decision early on that we're only going to deal with carriers directly. We'll, we'll negotiate exclusive contracts. We'll have great pricing. Um, and that's exactly what we've done. So when you're looking at your PEP wave, go look at our data plans as well, and you can go ahead and pick all that up. All of these units do include a year of PEP waves prime care, and what that includes is a, a one year warranty. It includes your one year access to their in control two uh, system, which is their platform to operate these systems remotely from say a, a computer. Customers fall in love with this in control two system because it makes operating and, and making changes to these systems very, very easy. It also provides your software, any software updates, and it also provides uh, speed fusion. Um, I'm not getting into speed fusion right now because uh, I've made another video that gets into the different aspect of that suite of, of uh, basically products that you get. It it's, includes hot failover, something called WAN smoothing, and something called bonding. Again, you can check that other video out that I made that I talked specifically about what all that me means. A lot of those uh, services are great for people that are uh, maybe needing unbreakable connectivity because maybe they take a lot of Zoom calls or Skype calls, and these suite of services really like make sure you have unbreakable connectivity. So they really are great. Uh, now I will say that on the, the Max BR1 Mini, the, the suite of Speed Fusion products is really not applicable if you don't get that failover license to activate the Wi-Fi as WAN. Uh, because if you didn't have you know, the Wi-Fi as WAN, for example, on the failover uh, product or service, there would be nothing to fail over to because you would have a cellular connection. So the hot failover is basically when one, if one service fails, it automatically goes to the, the other one. Again, on the Cat 7, if you didn't get the, that license, then there's nothing to fail over to. So um, it still gets the Speed Fusion suite of products, but really only applicable if you get that failover license. 
So that is it. That is a, uh, the overview of these units. If you have any other questions at TechnoRV, we, we have uh, people answering our phones that are highly knowledgeable in these units, and we're here to help you. You can email us, you can live chat with us, and yes, we do have old-fashioned, just pick up the phone and call us, and we'd be happy to talk to you about these units. So I hope that this comparison video has been helpful.